Right, morning guys, you join me on the ground at uh, Eglistar. Uh, we're going back to Wick, Scotland today. So uh, the route is 620 miles, it's going to take us about 4 hours and uh, 20 minutes. Pretty cold, grim morning here, sort of patchy fog coming in and out, and uh, temperature is uh, it's not so much, it's about 5 degrees. Again, that's just the enunciated test, which is correct. So uh, just a bit of a look at the route. Um, Taking off here from Eglistar, we're going to uh, probably do the uh, VAD 1 Bravo departure, which will uh, take us to the Mike November, then uh, track uh, 000, zero uh, to 8 miles, and then a left turn to 7202 bearing from the Victor Alpha NDB. And uh, hopefully we'll be above MSA before then, so we'll ask for a uh, direct to our uh, next waypoints, which will be uh, 64 North and 10 West. So we had to miss out of that hotel on November bit, which is a bit of a uh, dogleg. Then, uh, yeah, just taking us all the way down to uh, Scotland. So, uh, on a quick look at the brief. Uh, yeah, sort of taking off from here, it's cloudy. Um, <laughs> it's going to probably be a fair bit of uh, ice on departure, so what I'll do is I'll just run the icing system through, getting ready for that. And then, um, all the way up to flight level 170, hopefully find some uh, clear air out the clouds and uh, cruise along. It's a bit of a headwind on the way down, which is unfortunate, so we're going at 60% power. Um, and uh, the headwind will uh, certainly pick up as we get to uh, sort of around the Faroe Islands into uh, Scotland. Not much significant weather going on, and uh, the weather here, as you can see, it's uh, a little bit grim, sort of in weight 03, 600 metres in fog, vertical visibility of 1. And uh, Wick, the destination, it's, uh, it's due to be actually pretty good VFR by the time we get there. So uh, that's all looking good. Um, we need to take off alternate from here. Uh, what I'd like to take off alternate just in case. So I've got uh, Hop and I think I believe it's called, which is uh, where the hotel on November beacon is anyway. So if anything goes uh, goes wrong, the weather is actually pretty good there. So we can uh, nip in and source ourselves out. Yeah. So, uh, I've already requested to start, we haven't got an IFR clearance, there's an Iceland uh, airplane, which is this one here, uh, who's uh, just on final now, and once he lands and gets back in, because it's only an information service here, uh, we can get our IFR clearance to get out of here, but uh, I've got... I said, uh, six zero, over at the front. As you can hear. So, just turn him down a little bit. So uh, basically, half to just get started warm the engines up as uh, they take about 15 minutes to warm up, especially in colder temperatures as well. Uh, full of fuel, expected to burn about 55 gallons or so, uh, so we'll get to weight comfortably with about 20 gallons, and that's being fairly pessimistic with a uh, conservative uh, fuel burn in the cruise. And um, that's about it, really. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, what I'll do. I'll turn the cameras on uh, once he's landed. We've got our IFR clearance and uh, we're ready to get out of here. Hey, sir, I'm ready to uh, copy clearance November 4 to Lima Romeo. November 4 to Lima Romeo is clear to uh, Echo Golf Papa Charlie via VAD 1 Alpha departure, Victor Alpha, 64 North 10 West, Temos, flight level 170, squawk 2072. Go ahead. November 4 to Lima Romeo, cleared to Echo Golf Pack with Charlie by the VAD 1 Alpha departure, Victor Alpha 6410, Penos, flight level 170, score 2072, November 4 to Lima Romeo. That is correct. November Lima Romeo, Eilstadir, you may taxi to runway position via exit Alpha, wind uh, 020 degrees at 8 knots. Temperature 5 degrees, two units, 9 at 8, 8. Go ahead. Clear to taxi uh, onto the runway, entering and lining up on the runway via Alpha, November 4 to the Little power check on the runway. No, clear left and right. Off. And November 4 to Lima Romeo, we'll need uh, a few minutes on the runway just for a power check. All right, so it's Jobs Taxi, all go up. Everything else looking good. Clear on the left, clear on the right. Nah, the visibility just picks up, that's pretty good.
Right, that's all looking good, landing light will leave. Peter Heat comes on. Fuel points one and two, both come on. Flaps are up. Parking brake can now come off. Portal's closed. Crossfeed is uh, closed. Trim set for takeoff. Tanks aren't transferring. So I think we're ready for departure. That's at time 25. November 40, Lima Romeo, ready for departure. Roger, wind 020 degrees at 10 knots, no traffic on runway 03. Taking off runway 03, November 40, Lima Romeo. Right, all set. Let's get out of there. So, power's coming up. 100% on both. And take off. Uh, TSP's all look good. 100% achieved. Has been live. Knots road sites on the brakes. Um, just not interested in landing anymore. Gear comes up, fly level change. Fuel damping can come on. And also pilots come on. All centers are open. Icing onto normal. There you go, on top of the fog. So it's keeping 100% just for the time being to make the gradient. Don't want to turn the icing system off. That's a left turn as expected. Tracking zero 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 north. And a couple there, so we can go back to uh, ninety one percent on each engine. Right, after takeoff checks. So fossil set, landing light, tax light comes off. Fuel pumps one, fuel pumps two come off, flaps are already up. And everything else remains. Right, next event is eight miles. Golden November 42, Lima Romeo Eilstadir, airborne at uh, 1124. You may now contact Reykjavik Control, 119.7, and have a pleasant trip. Good day. Okay, Reykjavik Control, 119.7, and uh, thank you. Good day, uh, November 42, Lima Romeo. Reykjavik Control, good morning, November 40, Lima Romeo, 3,300 feet, climbing flight level 170 on a VAD 1 Alpha. November 42, Lima Romeo, Reykjavik Control, uh, morning to you, and stand by for a radar contact. Uh, so we just get back into clouds, so just put the icing uh, system just back onto normal. Events will be at AD, turning on to intercept the uh, 202 inbound to Victor Alpha. So, what can do ADF and we'll just swap them around, expecting the needle to swing around to the south, which it does. Right, 7.5D just approaching, expecting a left turn in half a mile. Yeah, the guy is saying turn left to 199 in six seconds, that makes sense. And as a reminder, 202 on the heading. Nice, right, so we've got a little bit of spare time, weather radar goes mode and weather that can go on. 7,000 feet, so PFD options and standard barring. Do that times two. That gives 7,900. And now I'm uh, for two Lima uh, Romeo. I have a right of contact on you. Whenever you are ready, you are cleared to uh, proceed direct to 64 North, 10 West. Okay, we're ready now. We'll proceed direct uh, to 64 North, 10 West, November, 14 Romeo. Okay, very good. 
So that'll be a further left turn. Destination minus two, that's hoping that changes a little bit. Alright, uh, 90, so let's get this oxygen ready. So we're getting loads in the uh, cylinder. So we get it over the right nostril. And just pull the fan and uh, tangle it a little bit. Nothing glamorous about these oxygen tubes. Okay, so that's on quite nicely. And let's pull oxygen. No leak coming from down there, and the ball's floating. There you go, I'll just keep it one ease here since that's what I'm going to. So I just don't need to change it. Test. And I'll just uh, monitor myself on the oximeter. Hopefully it's... Uh, yeah, so Forflight said there's a fair bit of icing and cloud on route, but I'm hoping it's just going to be associated with the odd CB that sort of uh, puts a spike in that area. So, uh, realistically, I'm hoping to sort of be on top of it from the, uh, the majority of the trip and uh, out of icing conditions. Airborne for uh, 10 minutes, we've only been 7 miles from the airport without departure. It's a bit of a shame that we couldn't get a suddenly departure, but uh, you can't always win. So, on well, my feet are freezing. I've got the survival seat on, but uh, walking around on the cold ground and uh, Fog has uh, sent the first my feet, so I got the heater blasting down in it, which is uh, quite nice. Better suspects, the same as last time, I uh, put my survival suits on, I'll be able to survive you know, quite happily without the heat off, which you warm up quite nicely in these things. Right, that's approaching 16.9 for flight level 170, out S, as uh, flashing in gone green, and captured. So, we're going to do let the aircraft accelerate to about 120 knots indicated or so, give us about a task of 155. And uh, then I'll pull the throttles back to uh, 60%. Okay, yeah, it sounds like a good, so I can about 60% on both. Seems both, both props look fairly well matched. Fuel flow 5.1, 5.2 gallons per hour. Let's change the right engine a little bit. There we go, that looks down. 5.1, 5.2. So just over 10 gallons per hour. And uh, initially we've got a fuel destination of 30, but so we're going to pick up a bit of a headwind on route, so it looks better to decrease as we go further on. And time of destination is 15, 16 UTC. I'm expecting that to go up as well. So that's all looking good, so what to do just before flight, so uh, just gone to the nav log, so expecting 64 north, 10 west, we're expecting uh, to be there with, uh, let's get the line up, 59 gallons of fuel remaining, so that's a good uh, sort of setting point. Yeah, so uh, sat in the cruise. Done sort of just some initial calculations, and uh, I'll keep a very close eye on that every 30 minutes, so the next one will be at uh, 10 past the hour. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So, we're light, or well, light to the maximum takeoff, which uh, all the airplane performance tends to be uh, calculated out. So, we've got a task of 157. Uh, meanwhile, the four flight profile uh, has uh, is expecting a task of about 149. So, we've got a few extra knots in there as well, which is pretty good. So, uh, so far, so good. We're in a good place. Um, 
be that glare on the on the windshield with the sun and uh, sort of the cloud around. I can't really see much out the window, which is a bit disappointing, but uh, let's hope that changes. So uh, yeah, what I'll do, just put you into perspective. We're just there on uh, East Iceland, and we've got that long old journey to do. So uh, yeah, I'll turn the cameras off and uh, I'll give you an update soon in the cruise. So see you in a bit. Hi guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, you're joining us in the cruise. Uh, we're making fairly good progress actually. We're just uh, approaching the Fair Islands, which is uh, sort of the white uh, shade there on the map there. So uh, to put it in a big, uh, big sort of pitch here, we're uh, just about halfway there. So uh, as you can see, looking out the uh, window, not sure how well the camera will pick it up, but you can actually see the Fair Islands. So uh, lots of uh, tiny little islands all joined together. And, uh, sort of quite tall as well so quite a quite sort of a pretty uh, pretty formation the airport uh vega vaga i think it's called is on the western side of the island and uh, for the first time in a long time i've actually seen it's actually got pretty decent weather with uh, light subly winds and uh, i think it's about a few at uh, 1600 feet so uh yeah aircraft's doing pretty well uh tcps are all pretty much and holding quite steady i have noticed that the, uh, the right engine's running slightly hotter than the left so uh, but I suspect that's basically because the sun, uh, unfortunately, we're just going to get into cloud, but um, the sun has sort of been beating on that one, so it's going to have slightly hotter and slightly hotter gearbox and one on the left-hand side. Not using too much icing fluid at all, actually. I've uh, given it a blast a few times on departure and uh, one or two times on the cruise. Uh, just to sort of shift a little bit of ice. Uh, we're clear of all conditions now, but it's still registering as full, so uh, we've got uh, plenty of options there. And... Uh, we're looking to probably start transferring fuel from the auxiliary tanks to the uh, main tanks uh, in the not distant future. So these will drop when it goes on to the next sensor, so about uh, 15 gallons or so. And then uh, when it does that, I'll probably look at uh, doing a transfer. But uh, still, fuel at destination is still saying uh, 33. I expect that to go to around 25 or something uh, by the time we turn the corner. Uh, because the wind that we're going to hit, if we go onto satellite, here you go. Uh, actually, it doesn't look as dramatic on this as saying that we're in the worst of it. And I think this forecast is probably a little bit off, actually. It's, uh, it's sort of saying that we're going to have a 30 knot headwind, and we've actually got, um, having a look at the PFD at the moment, only an 18 knot headwind component. So fingers crossed we're not going to get that uh, as bad as sort of forecast. But if you scroll to coming closer to Wick, you can see it's sort of 35 knots and more or less bang on the track. So uh, I'm expecting fuel and destination to go down to about 25. And, uh, but that's what we plan for anyway in the morning coming to one. It gives us, uh, uh, we've got Wick and we've got alternates. Uh, we've got alternates on route. Uh, we've got the fair islands we need a bit for an emergency. Failing that, uh, when we get to around uh, Penalston waypoints, if there's any issues, we can go to somewhere where the weather's good. And that's located here. We've got Wick and a destination alternate. We've got uh, uh, Inverness, which is uh, which is there. So uh, yeah, it's all going pretty well actually. Uh, just sort of chilling out, uh, listening to a bit of music, just keeping an eye on the weather, on the, uh, weather keeping an eye on the aircraft, uh, keeping a little bit of log going at the moment. Uh, you might not be able to make too much sense of that, but um, it's every 30 minutes or so, I'm just due to make another one. Uh, uh, just uh, logging out what fuel we've got aboard, what fuel we're going to have at our destination, the timings, etc. And uh, with four flights as well, three, three, eight, a good log as well with the uh, with the, uh, the actual uh, nav log here. So it's saying that we're going to be at Penos. Uh, you have to just look at the list line. We're 37 gallons remaining, and uh, Penos, you know, we're 45 gallons remaining. So uh, I'll need to update the actual uh, fuel figure, which will decrease ever so slightly, but. Uh, Definitely got fuel in our favour at the moment, so looking good. And uh, probably last but not least, uh, the weather at Wick. If uh, we can actually do a little flight from that page. So Echo Gold, Papa Charlie, uh, the latest one's at uh, 12.52 Lou, so uh, that's uh, just coming up to 30 minutes old. Also, 170, 10 knots, gusting 20, so they'll be using runway 1.3. All the nines, good. Fuel at 2,100, which is good. Uh, temperature 8, uh, point, sorry, temperature 10, dew point 8, and Q&H of uh, 986. So, uh, the weather's actually looking pretty good there. Great look at the PFD. There you go. Just shows that uh, the Garmin display here with some passing vision is pretty... Uh, it's pretty cool, it's good for orientation, and it's actually really nice to sort of get patterns like that anyway. It uh, just makes it a little bit more interesting, just to show you what the PFD would actually look like without uh, synthetic vision. Uh, there you go. A little bit boring, isn't it? So, uh, there you go, that's a lot nicer.
So, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll probably turn the cameras on as we approach sort of coasting in at Scotland, and uh, I'll say goodbye to you guys for now. Cheers. Yeah, guys, so uh, you're joining us. We're back in familiar territory now. Uh, we're into uh, the Scottish FIR back in the UK airspace and uh, what I've actually decided to do uh, probably about uh, probably 10 minutes ago now is uh, I got the weather for uh, the Orkney Islands where Kirkhall's uh, located and uh, it's actually looking pretty good there so I cancelled IFR where we're descending to 3,000 feet to be in the middle of the bay we may choose to go a little bit lower uh, depending on what's going on and uh, do a little bit of sightseeing go from Kirkhall really far and then uh, sort of follow the islands down the east coast of uh, Scotland and uh, where the BRP here is uh, Keith is probably pronounced something probably completely different in Scottish and then we'll just join to uh, go into Wick. Uh, Wick is unmanned today, um, so there's going to be no ATC, it's traffic calls only, you need to do a, uh, an exemption um, to uh, to land there out of hours, uh, which I've done. And uh, the handling agents, to be fair, they're brilliant actually, they're coming in to look after us and uh, fuel us up and then uh, I'll be straight back off to Oxford to uh, tonight for a night time flight. Which I'm sorry guys, I won't be recording that one because I've done enough filming today, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been pretty good fun doing the Iceland trip. So uh, yeah, looking at the map, uh, Kirkwall, so this is the waypoint which is in the middle of the, uh, in the middle of the uh, sort of uh, harbour marina, what do you call it, just the open space of water between the islands. And uh, we're estimating that in about uh, 13 minutes time, so uh, we're in a gentle bean after sense. Um, we're passing 8,500 now. Good enough, 3,000 feet and 400 feet per minute. So it's actually quite a comfortable descent in this aircraft. It's a glide of, uh, you can see on the screen here, it's a glide of uh, flight path angle of 1.4 degrees. And uh, sort of keeping 75% on both engines, which actually increased in the uh, yeah, increased cruise setting when I was comfortable with the weather and uh, the fuel figure went uh, uh, wick. Uh, it actually gives you a fairly uh, you know decent airspeed you know not something that's too unreasonable for a fair or turbulence but um, you know it, it basically means that you don't need to pull the throttles back so you can just sort of keep it chuddling down so uh, you have a look on the pfd you can see the uh, all the islands uh, appearing there quite nicely and uh, just terrain wise uh, thank you God, you it? realistically you it's the highest bit is 50 to 78 which is going to be off to our uh, west so our right hand side that will be about 8 miles clear, and uh, there's not too much else to affect if you wind turbines etc. around uh, If you wind turbines etc. at 900 feet, a bit of terrain on the approach of Kirk 900 feet. So I think uh, 2,000 feet initially, and then, uh, even though we're going to 3, I'll probably get down to about 2 or something, depending on what the cloud's up to. And then uh, may choose to actually go even uh, even lower. So uh, speaking to uh, Scottish information at the moment, one three four eight five, and uh, I suspect we'll get to the North of the Islands. North East for a place called Twat, as as it is. Uh, we'll change on to Kirkwall one one eight three zero five. So uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated there. Yeah, so 10 minutes ago, I'll uh, ask to change your route. That's Scottish November 42, Lima Romeo, happy to change your route to Kirkwall, 118305. Yeah, November 42, Lima Romeo, Roger, they've got your details, 118, that's number 305, uh, good night. Goodbye, and uh, do you want to keep the squawk or cost for the uh, Yeah, you can squawk 7000, please. 7000, good day, 42, Lima Romeo. There you go, you can see the... Uh, I reckon we should go a little bit lower. Uh, Andrews. Yeah, so all I'm going to do, I'm just going to go VS and just increase the rate of descent. There you go, it goes going down about 900 feet per minute, see what that feels like. Let's pull the fossils back to about 70%, see if it goes too high, if it gets too rough. We'll uh, make it a second plan. Kirk all good afternoon, November 40, Lima Romeo. November 42, Lima Romeo, Kirkwall approach, good afternoon. Information is Quebec, QNH 985 hectopascals, basic service. Quebec 985 hectopascals, the basic service, and uh, we're just routing from uh, southbound. Probably the closest point to your field will be seven miles to the west in uh, approximately six minutes' time, November 40, Lima Romeo. November 2, Lima Romeo, Roger, I've uh, no, 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 no report of traffic to take next report west of it. Okay, for to be right 
So is there anything that stops me going any lower? So around the bay, 900 feet, which is the, you can see the lump actually bang on the nose, so uh, that's actually on the final approach for uh, what would be the easterly runway at Kirkwall. And then, uh, I don't think there's anything stopping, because everything from there wants is, I mean, there's a mast, which is, uh, zoom in, there's a mast 230 feet high, there's a, um, the wind turbine, which is 500 feet high, so I think we can go quite low level for the bay and actually have a bit of fun. Which is kind of nice, actually, since, uh, you know, I, I do love long night fast logs. It's, um, yeah, it's a different type of challenge, but uh, then again, you get a chance to go for fast, especially around uh, terrain to see if you like this. Yeah, do it. Yeah, it's so I'll just knock the aircraft a little bit to the east. Uh, just so we avoid that bit of cloud that's over the top of the uh, over the top of the high ground. So that's probably quite a good uh, path there. Nice clear path. Now you can see Wick. Uh, it's going to be all the way in the distance at about the one o'clock. Uh, that was Jonas as well. And that's approaching two thousand feet there. All the parts can go up. Bye, thanks. So. I might actually get some hands-on flying. So I think... Uh, no, 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 no. Look, just uh, anything like that, so it's a part of the that comes into effect. So let's get it to 1,000 feet. Two four, request taxi, runway zero nine. Well, we two four, taxi, right, runway zero two, Romeo one, enter line up, runway zero nine. So the only threat we need to watch out for, really, when we're a bit low level, is birds in Scotland. Um, so it's keeping a very good eye on the window at all times. The airport should be over there somewhere. There you go, you can see the runway lights. That's November 40, Lima Romeo, west of me. November 40, Lima Romeo, report 15 DME to the south. Okay, 40, Lima Romeo. I'll be just uh, so simply on in them. Logan 724 ready for departure. Logan 724, surface wind 170 degrees 8 knots, runway 09 clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 09, Logan 724. This is a pretty neat way to end the flight, to have a little holiday. That's one of those, I've no idea where you'd be able to see it. I think that's one of those um, underwater. Uh, no, so I've described it, it's just a lighthouse. <laughs> I thought it was going to be one of those underwater um, sort of wind turbines. That's a uh, tide turbine or whatever you want to call it, covered something. But no, it's just a rock. Yeah, I know not be very chatty. Uh, two reasons. First of all, I don't have a clue about the history of this place, so I couldn't tell you anything decent. Uh, but second of all, um, yeah, it's just stunning just to take in. It's just nice to you know, sit here and enjoy it. So rather than me ruin it for you, I thought I'd let you do the same. November 4 to Lima Romeo, 15 miles south. November 4 to Lima Romeo, uh, three call, WIC information, 119.705, good day. 
Stunning place, eh? No idea if the game's in prime up there. Probably not. Yeah, I guess you got Wick. Just to, uh, yeah, what are we, 9.2 miles now on the DME? Uh, in our uh, 11 o'clock, so uh, yeah, we're just sort of edging out, going to join for the left base on uh, one three, and uh, there's just a short taxi into uh, into the apron. Hopefully, the guy will be there to uh, give us some fuel. Our next flight plan is file four, uh, 1630. So uh, actually, yeah, it gives us loads of time, which is quite nice because originally it was going to be quite tight, but I was quite fortunate that I managed to get away a little bit ahead of schedule. Uh, the aircraft actually performs a little bit better than the flight manual, so thank you, Diamond. And uh, actually picks up, you know, some... Uh, the winds weren't great on route, but they weren't as bad as forecast, so... Um, I think with those uh, three factors, I actually got here a bit earlier, so it gives me time just to sort of... Uh, just chill out a little bit, which is quite nice. And, uh, sort of get my head into the next flight, and... Uh, most importantly, after the takeoff time of uh, 11.25, go for a walk. Yeah, I know it was only a few days ago where I departed here, but it seems like, uh, oh, it seems like a month ago. It's been a pretty epic trip for me. This, this has been quite hard work for me. I, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this before, so it's all massively new to me. Um, and a big learning curve, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, the most important thing is don't trust the tap in Iceland. Uh, I suppose it's difficult for those guys because the weather's so unpredictable, but um, yeah, it was... Uh, Places for fogging out that weren't meant to fog out, places that were meant to be foggy were beautiful, but um, don't have a lot, so it's definitely somewhere I, I'm going to go back to. Hopefully, have some better weather this time. Right, pull the throttles back, so I'll put the lights on since an uncontrolled airfield. Piece of heat remains on, fuel pumps are on, fuel pumps too. Flaps are up for the time being, parking brake is off with pressure, trims all normal, and so auxiliary tanks are not transferring. So you can see the airport on our left. November 42, Libra Romeo joining best, uh, left base for one three. So, nothing heard on come one, nothing seen on the screens traffic wise, so uh, I think we've got the whole place to ourselves. So again, come down and first stage of flap. Racing power just to compensate for that additional drag. And start to send there. Get big from leaving a thousand foot altitude in a sec. So Windsock, yeah, looks probably, I mean, it's basically bang on a crosswind. So all clear on final. So uh, maybe it is favoring one three slightly, so I'm fairly happy this is my runway to use. Now the wind just blows on some final approach track there. Uh, 
Bing speed max 100. What we can actually do is let's just do a uh, approach flap landing. If you've got a bit of crosswind, you've got a long runway, it's actually a bit easier to land with uh, just the approach flap rather than the landing. Just start to bring that speed back because we are going a little quick. Seven four two Lima Romeo, final landing, runway one frame. There we go, looking good. No wide runway, so chopping across, not flying too early. Holding it off. Left pedal, bit of a right stick. Eventually, there you go. Uh, landing like can come off, Peters can come off, fuel points one and two, and the flaps confirmed. That comes up, landing at 415. Right, that was an epic trip, I really enjoyed that, and I hope you guys did exactly the same. Oh, brilliant, I can see the handling agent's car, so, so he'll look after us. Nice dabbing the brakes. I think he'll be happy to see me, so he can go home to the pub and uh, have a beer. November 40, Lima Romeo, one free vacated and uh, taxiing to the main haven. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that one anyway. It was um, an amazing trip for me. That was uh, definitely a trip of a lifetime. And uh, fingers crossed I'll be able to bring you on some more in the not too distant future. Right, brilliant. That'll do that. So, uh, yeah, guys, see you next time. Bye.